Hello, this is the Trade Tech U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview and International Economic Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 12th of September, 2021, and ending Friday the 17th, which will be triple expiration options. That means uh, commodities, futures, and options expiring on Friday. Then we usually get an options and unraveling move somewhere between Wednesday and Thursday. Um, of the four options unraveling moves, the quarterly ones, this is probably the least interesting just because, you know, it's the end of summer and most of the summer months were not that exciting and there's not a lot of positions put on, but we'll still see what happens. And I do see, I, well, the best part is we're starting to see some interest in the markets. But let's start with the dollar index daily chart, the Forex stuff. Here's a look at the dollar index. Uh, didn't do anything this week, really came back up a bit and pulled back late. So, um, Small ranges again there, and it's still summertime. We're half size. Here's the euro dollar inverse of the dollar index, as you would expect. The pound dollar, nothing there at all. The Aussie dollar, uh, fairly flat. Uh, the euro yen, also not that interesting. The pound yen, uh, very flat. So, again, it was you know, it's still summer for forex, and we know that. Here's the 30 minute candles. Let's start with the euro dollar for the week and just so you know, high to low for the week is not even 100 pips. That's why we know we're half size because there's nothing there. And if you look at the entire move was Tuesday going into Wednesday and then the pound dollar high to low for the week here is about 170 pips, which is 160. Maybe better than what you would have thought from the other one, but look, Forex is, this is not Forex's time, right? This is not where you focus your efforts on Forex. Everybody that wants to make money is ignoring Forex and doing other things. So we will continue to focus on that, do what we need to do, but it's definitely a, a half size environment for Forex. All right, so now let's get to the uh, major stuff, the US stock market. Here's the ES front month futures contract, daily chart of the broad market and futures form. As you can see, we rolled over a bit this week. Nothing major, uh, sold off late Friday, but before that it really was just kind of Looks red, but it's more contained um, than you think. We'll look at it in the intra week action here in a minute. Here's the crude oil numbers 69.71 up at $1.57, continuing to get storms in the uh, Caribbean and then hitting the Atlantic coast. Gold down $11.80. Nobody seems to care about inflation there. SP cash down 34.70. So this is it, right on a static trend line. So here's your question that's a normal, just back and forth move. Is that it? Like, are we going to sit here and hold this level and, and just go higher? You can see the trend lines, but you know, at some point in time, these trend lines are going to break and people are going to pay the price for being complacent, which I think is what's about to happen. The NASDAQ 100 down 120. Um, very flat. That was on Friday. Very flat during the week. We'll show you that in a minute. The SOX up 25. So the semiconductors rebounded almost to new highs during the day on Friday, but nothing. Biotechs down 27 uh, off the highs. There's a cup and handle here, but it's not that interesting. The Russell loses 21.58 points. That's awesome. The VIX gains 2.15. Eh, I mean, that's a good gain on the VIX. You know, we've been here a couple times with these spikes. Is this the beginning of something major? You know, September is historically the most negative month in the stock market. Um, you know, so is this the start of it and the VIX is never going to look back? I don't know. Trend, we don't have a signal for anything else, but that's just other than September sucks. Trend at 1.67 puts the 10-day moving average at 1.09. NASDAQ volume, 4.6 billion shares, essentially. That's the highest volume. So this is interesting. It is triple expiration. That's usually low volume in the market. People don't trade. And uh, this is the best volume we've seen since uh, eight weeks ago. And then we have options expiration ahead of us, so interesting. But the advanced client ratio on the NASDAQ was negative 13.69, so way more stocks down than up on the New York, negative 8.38, so again, more negative than positive. Google loses $53.30. Apple loses $5.10 on the court ruling, which was a negative for them. Uh, so very interesting there. Netflix up $1.18 but still mostly down from the highs of the session. Amazon down 1501. Remember, Amazon's paying some of the price for the Amazon, uh, the Apple ruling. Tesla down $18.59. Not much there. Facebook gains 69 cents. 
Zoom gains five dollars and sixty-four cents. Starting to break out here. Goldman Sachs down a buck ten. New lows for the last two weeks. TLT, the twenty-year bond ETF, down a dollar thirty-two. Puts it nowhere. And Dow Jones Industrial Average down two hundred seventy-one points. Bitcoin sits at forty-five thousand. Remember, it was back over fifty recently, and uh, came back in even this week and came back in. So there's that. Now you look at the ten-minute charts for the ES for the week. And again, remember, we rolled contracts on uh, Thursday going into Friday. So you can see there's no volume. So first of all, we had the Monday holiday. It doesn't even matter. So Friday's on the far left, and that, that takes you, like, here's Friday's close, right, at the back end of that, right? And then Monday's a holiday, so it doesn't matter. So then Tuesday, we open about where we closed on Friday. Um, I'm just showing you the December contracts. There's no volume in this, but it's just a way to make it equal, right? And then, uh, so we, we gap down a little bit, went lower, came back, and then closed, you know, a little bit down for the day compared to where we opened on Wednesday gap down filled the gap went lower came back closed even for the day so still every time we start to see some negative bias but the action wasn't that great and that we're just not there yet I think this is not the market we all want to see uh, from a trading perspective on Thursday basically opened flat went higher came down closed a little lower than where we started basically at the lows of the week at that point and then Friday the big gap up uh, filled the gap pretty early, went a little lower, came back over lunch. You're sitting there now. Remember, this is the co futures quarterly contract roll day, so you expect nothing. And over lunch, you're still flat for the day, and that's about what you expect. But then we sold off late in the day, and that's the interesting part and suggests that there's you know, some things going on. Here's the NASDAQ side. So same look there, but we're just starting to see that there's stuff happening, right? And uh, I don't know. It's better than it's been. Hard to say what it's going to lead to, but um, certainly the the bias needs to be the downside finally, and that's what we were expecting coming out of summer and uh, Labor Day weekend and going into um, September and everything else. So uh, we this week again, just to be clear, let's look at the economic data. But the thing is, you need to focus on is the fact that we have uh, triple expiration on Friday. So uh, Sunday, uh, FBI, FPI out of New Zealand, PPI out of Japan. Nobody cares. Monday. German WPI, Italian quarterly unemployment rate, uh, federal budget balance out of the U.S. at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Monday. Housing price index out of Australia that night. We're already into Tuesday at this point. Revised industrial production. U.K. has got their unemployment rate. PPI out of Switzerland. NFIB small business index out of the U.S. at 6 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. Manufacturing sales out of Canada. CPI here in the U.S. So that's so we're still half size in forex because of the summer but that's one of our big three so we're down to quarter size out of that number for forex on monday night going into tuesday and then it's already tuesday evening uh current account out of new zealand core machinery orders out of japan westpac consumer sentiment out of australia retail sales industrial production and employment rate out of china tertiary industry activity out of japan cpi ppi rpi out of the uk Final French final CPI number, housing price index out of the UK at 4.30 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday, industrial production out of Europe, 10-year bond auction out of the UK, CPI out of Canada, Empire State Manufacturing Index, import and export prices, 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, industrial production and capacity utilization at 9.15 here, CB leading index out of the UK, crude oil inventories at 10.30, GDP out of New Zealand that night, Trade balance out of Japan that night. MI inflation expectations out of Australia. And then their unemployment rate in RBA Bolton. Uh, going into Thursday already. SECO economic forecast out of Switzerland. Italian trade balance. Trade balance out of the broad European sector. Spanish 10-year bond auction along with housing starts. ADP non-farm employment change. Forward and securities purchases and wholesale sales out of Canada. Retail sales and Philly Fed Manufacturing Index out of the U.S., along with our initial and continuing jobless claims numbers. Business inventories at 10 a.m. Natty Gas, 10.30. Tick long-term purchases at 4 p.m. At the close on Thursday, uh, Business New Zealand's Business Manufacturing Index. And then Friday is very simple. Retail sales, current account out of U.K., current account out of Europe, Final CPI out of Europe and preliminary University of Michigan sentiment here in the U.S. So it's a light week for the U.S. Trade balance is the big one. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
uh, is that right? Did I, did I skip? No, it's CPI is the big one here. Um, but really, there's nothing. There's no Fed announcement. Um, but what we do have to focus on is this, right? You've got the triple expiration on Friday, which will make that a bust and uh, usually a unraveling move on Wednesday. Could be Thursday. But let's just focus on the fact that we're back to September. It's a negative month historically. And maybe finally, after the last couple of months of boredom, back to work. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading week.